Thank you for joining me for this interview. Uh, for my viewers, could you give a short introduction about yourself and the work you do? Yes, I can. Uh, thank you for having me, of course. Uh, my name is Bart Verhegen. Um, I'm an atmospheric scientist by training. I did my PhD in Canada in formation of atmospheric aerosols. Uh, I continued in that type of research in Switzerland where I studied the interactions between aerosols and clouds and their climate effects. And since a year or what, I am a lecturer at Amsterdam University College, where I teach several courses in Earth System Science and Climate Science. The reason for this interview is your recently released paper, Scientist's View about Attribution of Global Warming. Could you give a short introduction about the subject of this paper? Yes, and perhaps I, I should add to what I said previously, the, the bulk of the work in this paper was actually done when I was for half a year at the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency. Uh, they spearheaded this survey amongst scientists. The idea was to get a better view of how the scientific community thinks about certain issues, namely those issues that in the public debate are very important. Uh, some so-called skeptical arguments are very important in the public debate, they're really resonating with the public. And the PBL, uh, the Dutch EPA, so to say, they wanted to see how do, uh, how is the scientific community as a whole, the climate science scientific community, how do they perceive those types of issues? That was the, the rationale behind this survey. What were the kind of results that you found with this uh, survey? So far, we've only looked actually at, at, at a fraction of the questions. We focused mainly our analysis on the questions of attribution, meaning the causes of climate change. Mm -hmm. What we found was that of this broad group of scientists that we surveyed, uh, a little over 1800 responses we received, that a strong majority is indeed of the opinion that human emissions of greenhouse gases caused the majority of global warming that we've seen. Mm -hmm. That is one prime conclusion. And more so, the more expertise these respondents have measured, for example, by their number of published papers, but also their self-reported areas of expertise, the, the more they agree with that conclusion of anthropogenic causation of this warming. What kind of consensus level on the cause of global warming did your paper find? In the whole group of scientists, we found uh, that approximately 85% agree with a dominant human causation. If you look at the half the respondents who publish more than 10 publications, according to their own self-reporting, by the way, uh, then that consensus level is around 90%. How does this reported consensus from your survey then compare to similar studies like, for example, NREC 2010? which also surveyed scientists. Yeah, there have been various surveys done, and most of them are in the ballpark, let's say, between 80 and 100%, so to say. It's a quite wide, wide ballpark, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, there have been several high-profile studies which found a 97% consensus. Um, and some people try to paint that as being inconsistent with each other. I don't think that's quite true because there are differences in the setup of some of these surveys. Um, for example, Doran and Kendall Zimmerman in 2009, they published results that have been widely publicized as a 97% agreement amongst the most actively publishing climatologists. And that is true, but the wider audience of respondents, of Earth scientists, had a consensus of a significant contribution of human activity of, I believe, 82%. And what they did find was that agreeing with that consensus position of 82% rises to like 90% for climatologists and 97% to the most actively publishing climatologists. If you put those numbers in a line, then they're very consistent with what we found. We invited 6,500 scientists who study various aspects of global warming. Also, people who are maybe Earth scientists or people who study the impacts of global warming. So not all of those are really physical climatologists actively publishing in climatology. Some of them may have published one or two papers on the effects of global warming. So it's really the wider scientific fields that we surveyed. Mm 
that's perhaps more comparable then to the 82% of Doran and Kendall Zimmerman. Yeah. And then that goes to the 90% and the 97 as you zoom in to the most actively publishing scientists. And those percentage consensus ranges that Doran and Kendall Zimmerman found are in that sense very comparable to ours. We really looked very specifically at to what extent the respondents agree with the IPCC statement as they made it in their fourth assessment report. Namely, that greenhouse gases contribute more than 50% of the observed global warming since the 1950s. Mm -hmm. That's a very specific and precise definition. Whereas, for example, Doran and Kendall Zimmerman looked at, their question was a significant contribution, which is much less precise and perhaps less strict in the eye of the respondent of a survey. And the same with Andereg et al. They looked at, for example, signatories of public statements or authors of AR4 as agreeing with the consensus. And again, we really specified in very specific terms what this consensus means. And in our survey, it means a dominant influence of greenhouse gases. So we use, we think, a slightly more strict and definitely a more precise definition of what the consensus entails. You also touch upon one of study that mentions a 97% consensus, which is, I assume, the Cook 2013 study. And they did a survey of the scientific literature. Yeah. What is the cause for the difference between what they found in the consensus based on the scientific literature and what you find on when you survey scientists themselves? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I think the answer lies in what I said before, that scientists who publish more publications in climate science they generally agree to a greater extent with a dominant human influence on climate arguably because they have more expertise in the area now the natural consequence of course is then that if scientists who are more who publish more if they agree more with the consensus then if you look at the literature you'll find a higher consensus rate if you count the number of papers who agree you find a higher agreement with the consensus than if you count opinions of individual scientists. Because in our survey, in a survey of opinions, each opinion counts as much. Whereas if you count the scientific literature, then what's in the scientific literature counts. And then if an author published 100 papers, then that counts stronger than, whereas in our survey, that opinion's author counts as much as an author who published only one paper whereas their expertise level and their experience in the area may be vastly different, of course. So it makes perfect sense that the literature and an opinion survey, that they give different results. And indeed, an analysis of the literature will find a higher consensus rate that's, cons that's consistent with the more expert and the more publishing scientists agree to a greater extent with that consensus position. And there's one more difference, which I haven't mentioned yet, um, we specifically included a lot of skeptical scientists in our survey and also um, skeptical spokespersons, if you wish, uh, publicists uh, and people who signed public declarations skeptical of climate science to get a feeling of the main criticisms of climate science. So we have compared to these other surveys, a slight overrepresentation of skeptical voices in our survey. One of the things you already touched upon was that there is a difference between the stated positions of scientists and the level of ex expertise. You found a quite noticeable difference between attribution experts and aerosol experts when they stated their position on how much global warming was caused by uh, humans. Uh, what is the reasons, reason for this difference? Yeah, that's a... Uh I think that's one of the most interesting aspects of the paper to me. It's, it's, a, it's a slightly more complicated one, perhaps. It relates to the question where we asked what fraction of observed global warming since the 1950s can be attributed to human greenhouse gases. And the IPCC in AR4 stated that this contribution of greenhouse gases is very likely more than 50%. We had three answer options that correspond to that. 50 to 75 percent, 75 to 100, or more than 100 percent. Now, if you take aerosol cooling into account and the fact that natural forcings and natural variability have been very small, at least as assessed by most scientists and most studies, 
then it makes sense that if aerosols cause cooling, which they do in the aggregate effect, that greenhouse gases by themselves would have caused more than the warming observed, and some of that was masked by aerosol cooling. But of course, a contribution of more than 100% is a little counterintuitive. So people who are less aware of that aerosol cooling, they may not pick the number higher than 100%, even though that is actually the most consistent with the IPC assessment, if you read on in the IPCC, and with most literature. So we thought, well, how come that most respondents actually picked the answer 75 to 100 percent rather than the number which is most well supported by the literature higher than 100 percent? We thought, well, that's because it's counterintuitive, because they may not be so aware of the aerosol cooling. And we went to check that second assumption by seeing like, OK, people who are experts in attribution and people who are experts in aerosols and clouds, they should be more aware of that. And indeed, they are, because they, to a greater extent, picked the answer option. Greenhouse gases caused more than 100% of the observed warming. The consensus that your and other studies found, is that accurately portrayed in the media? Because you did look into that part with your study. And which was the media coverage. True, yeah. We asked a question, how often are you being re represented in the media regarding your views on climate change? And we try to cross-correlate that with their views on climate change, specifically regarding attribution and regarding climate sensitivity. And what we found is that the people who are most skeptical of a human influence on climate, that they report the most frequent media coverage, which is a little peculiar in a way, or at least it's a sign that people whose opinion is most strongly different from the mainstream that their opinions are somehow amplified by the mainstream media this is not entirely a surprising result because it has been shown from a different perspective in other studies mainly by uh, boykov uh, but he for example looked in the media itself and tallied okay how often do we see which stories we took the other direction, we asked scientists themselves, how often are you portrayed in the media? So we tried to, to look at the same issue of media representation of different views, but not by looking at the media, but by asking the scientists themselves. So via an independent and entirely different way of analysis, we basically confirmed that finding that uh, extreme, if you wish, opinions, scientifically extreme opinions are amplified in the media. I have now one final question uh, for you for this interview. What do you think was the most interesting result from your consensus survey? Um, this media coverage story, I think it's, it's interesting, but my favorite is actually how the aerosol cooling and the greenhouse warming, how that interacts with each other and how even climate scientists, broadly defined, right, but how even many of our respondents still apparently misinterpret that AR4 attribution statement. And I think that's there's an important lesson there in how you communicate um, the, the, the different causes of climate change. And in that sense, I'm actually glad that in AR5, this statement was very much improved upon by specifying it in terms of the net anthropogenic influence rather than only greenhouse gases. That's a big improvement. But this interplay, greenhouse warming, aerosol cooling, and how you can see how that story is consistent if you look at how people with a certain expertise answer it and how if you cross the answers to sensitivity with attribution, it all becomes a consistent story. That, that to me, was the most interesting part of this analysis. Thank you for answering that last question and, of course, for this interview. And I hope you may find more interesting results from the data that you have. Thank you very much.